Hello, this is Eitan Shalom at www.bodymindwellnesscenter.com. I am an Ayurvedic physician and licensed acupuncturist, and I have a blog called Kitchen Medicine Cooking Medicine, as well as the website that I addressed that I just gave you. And today I want to, to talk about how to wash lentils or what in India is called dal or parapu in South India. The correct way to wash lentils in order to make lentil soup from scratch. And today I'm working with the Middle Eastern pink dal or pink lentils that um, I think the Arabic word is ads. Um, pink lentils that resemble somewhat the masur dal that's used in North India. And um, the first thing that you have to think about when you're preparing uh, lentils from scratch, lentil soup from scratch, is just uh, have a quick run through and make sure there are no stones. Nowadays, um, most of the lentils are very well cleaned so that they don't have any stones in them. Uh, but sometimes when you get um, lentils, there will still be some stones. And the last thing you want to do is break a tooth pressing down on a stone. So um, when I lived in India and Sri Lanka, uh, all of the lentils had stones in them. And you had to spread them out on a big um, a palm leaf uh, um, device. Uh, not a device, but a... Um, a large palm leaf uh, tray that was designed for uh, removing the lentils. Uh, so, sorry, designed for removing the stones from lentils and grains. In fact, there was a lovely way that the women would shake the thing, throwing the lentils up in the air, and that would expose the stones to the surface. But I haven't found um, a single a stone in here. If there were a stone in here, what you'd notice was it would it would make a sound that's different from the sound of the lentils. Of course, you might see it. You might feel it, but you might also hear one underneath that you'll have to pick out. I do find that when I get Indian lentils like a tour dal um, at the Indian market, there that there are, still are sometimes stones, but it's pretty rare. So now I'm going to take the lentils over to the sink. And um, the key point about preparing lentils from scratch for soup is to wash them very well and then soak them. So um, you want to you want to wash them multiple times until the starchy foam uh, that appears at the top um, disappears or is really uh, very little left. If you don't wash your lentils well, then when you cook them, there's going to be a lot of unnecessary starch uh, foam that you're going to have to keep scooping out. Um, and this way, by washing it really well, which is what every single Indian uh, cook I've ever seen does, um, by washing the lentils really well uh, four or five times, then the, the, the water is much clearer when you're cooking the soup. And I have figured out a shortcut of a sort, which is that when I wash the lentils, um, I put them in the sink like this, and I actually run the water on hot. Um, because, you know, just like when you wash your clothes with hot water, you can get more dirt out. I find that the hot water um, softens the surface of the, of the lentils better. Um, I, the, this particular kind of lentil that I'm using, which again is the pink Middle Eastern lentil that you can get either at a Middle Eastern market or I get it at the uh, um, at Whole Foods or the food co-op in town here in San Diego because I want to get the organic one. Um, uh, this one has a little bit less foam than the Indian lentils like Tour Dal or Chana Dal, but let's see what happens. So the first thing is I'm just going to fill it up and you already see that foam appearing, right? Um, that's just from the force of the water. And then what you do is, this is a little hard to do while holding the camera. This is my first video, so I'm just using my handheld camera. Um, you actually, um, I actually, you need, you need, and I'm going to move the bowl because you want the bowl to, to be um, stable. 
you actually get your your fingers in there and you actually this is what I learned from a woman named Lakshmi in when I lived in Chennai you get your fingers in there and you it's almost like you're squeezing the lentils to really rub the surface and um, if I weren't holding this camera uh, then I would um, be a little more aggressive because the bowl is moving so normally you'll hold the bowl with one hand okay so now you can see already how dirty that water is um, for one thing you're rem you are removing dirt I mean you don't know where these lentils have been you don't know whether in the warehouse uh, mice or rats have urinated on the lentils I don't mean to be disgusting but that is something that happens um, in storage because there are mice and rats um, you just don't know where they've been so first of all you're removing dirt but then second of all uh, I imagine and I you know I could be wrong I, 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 what is this this thick stuff I imagine that it's starch uh, why it's better to remove the starch I can't really say I just know that it is I mean we eat starch so it's not that starch is bad for you but Generally speaking, it's considered that the better you wash the lentils, uh, the easier they are to digest, the less they're likely to produce gas. So, um, you know, there's sometimes I've encountered uh, young hippies, I would call them, who think that somehow there must be nutrients in this water that we're discarding. No, this is not the same thing as boiling a vegetable to death and pouring out the water. That would be a mistake. You do want to drink that water. This is a question of cleaning the lentil. So why the um, why this um, method is a bit of a shortcut? Actually, this is a very large bowl. It's it's larger than. Uh, sorry, you saw my dishes in the sink. I'm going to actually transfer the lentils to a smaller bowl because. Um, that bowl is larger than it needs to be, and you'll see why in a minute. So I'm going to pour out some of this water down the drain, and then I'm going to pour the rest of my lentils. I'm going to pour the rest of my lentils back into that small bowl. This is not a professional cooking show. Well, it's professional in terms of what I'm teaching you. It's not tr professional in terms of having a professional kitchen. Uh, I'm actually doing this on the fly because I want to make uh, Lebanese lentil soup today. So um, why this is a shortcut, because now that I have the correct size bowl, I can, you can actually run the water um, like this until the water um, overflows the side of the bowl. And you can keep stirring it around like this. This actually is a little more uh, effective and easier than picking the bowl up, dumping the water out, picking it, it up. Fill it. That's what you have. I used to do in the old days was fill it up, rinse it, pour, fill it up again. And this way, it's just a continuous stream. Um, and I'm going to stop there and pour some of the excess water out. You, see, you can see that the water's getting clearer. This is, by the way, exactly the same method I use with rice. Um, although with rice I don't use hot water because I don't want rice is more delicate and I don't want to actually start the cooking process uh, uh, prematurely with rice because then your rice will be soggy. Um, so I see that there's a bunch of steam um, that's um, kind of fogging up my camera. That's a little better. So now you see all that scum coming to the top. Um, now I'm going to pour that off again. I'm going to get my... Ow, that water is hot. That water is too hot. I'm going to use some cold water now. Um, this is going more slowly than it normally would because I'm just using one hand. Um, so, again, I'm getting in there and I'm squeezing, I'm squeezing the lentils like that. Don't be afraid of your lentils. Squeeze them nice and firmly. It's kind of uh, just like the way you, I don't, know, I don't know what to compare it to. I don't think anything feels like this. It's kind of fun. I mean, to be perfectly honest, uh, um, I really, when I was a kid, when I was 20, Three and I first learned how to wash lentils. I, I thought that was really fun. <laughs> I know it doesn't sound like such a big deal, but um, but you know, our, our, it, it, there's a sensuality to cooking. 
um, that begins with the water, you know, the sound of water, the feel of water, the texture of things. I mean, one of the joys of food are the multiple and myriad numbers of textures of things. And in this case, it's the texture of the uncooked lentil that's sort of kind of fun. I don't know if you made mud pies when you were a kid, but my sister, uh, Daphne, and I would make mud pies as a kid, and that was a lot of fun. Probably my earliest foray into cooking. So now you see how I'm very vigorously shaking it up. Because I want to get the water until it's clear. And again, I'm taking my time because I'm talking to you guys. And uh, um, I'm not being as efficient as I would be. So don't be intimidated. It actually doesn't take as much time. If I were doing this... Um, with two hands, I would have the bowl there, I would be more aggressive, and I'd be done by now. But uh, I still want to give you the idea. So now you see how the water, though there's still foam coming up, the water is practically clear. I'm going to pour that out. That, see, the water is quite clear now. And there you have 